student of the word welcome to another kingdom bible study today i'm going to investigate the nature of the keys of the kingdom of heaven i shall define them and consequently expose their common nature the bible only explicitly mentions one key of the kingdom of heaven namely the key of knowledge so how do we know for certain what are the other keys of the kingdom of heaven that jesus christ gave to apostle peter are we gonna guess them no we are not we possess dominion over the earth but to exercise it we must use all the keys of the kingdom of heaven if we are ignorant of them then we are powerless even though we own dominion. So before I go further, let me introduce myself. I am Leroy Daly. On this channel, I teach about the kingdom of heaven and how we could operate in it. Today, I am defining the nature of the keys of the kingdom of heaven. But I must warn you that this video Bible study is not for everyone. If you have not yet entered into the kingdom, you may not benefit much from it. It is for Christians, born again believers who have entered into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? At this point, I want to look at four things the keys of the kingdom of heaven are not. First, it's not the faithful preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. That is not true. It's not about the keys. The gospel is not about the keys. If you preach the gospel, you must mention them, but talking about them is different from using them. And we want to know how to use the keys of the kingdom. So the gospel is not the key. Preaching about the faithful gospel of the kingdom of heaven is not the keys of the kingdom. Two different things. Neither are the words of Jesus Christ the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And the thing that's wrong with that statement is that Jesus said a lot of things and not everything that he said was relating to the keys of the kingdom. And the next thing I want you to know about the keys of the kingdom is that they are not symbolic. They do not represent something else. As a matter of fact, when you are employing the keys of the kingdom, you are doing something very specific. So it's not symbolic at all. The keys are not. Another spoiler alert. The keys of the kingdom are not power and authority. This is a consequence of utilizing the keys. So when you use the keys as you should, you possess power and authority with God and heaven. But the power and authority by themselves are not the keys of the kingdom. So, now that you know that, these are general and these four um, items I just mentioned, uh, the preaching of the gospel, the words of Jesus, and that it is symbolic, and the kingdom of heaven, the keys of the kingdom are power and authority. These are general and vague statements that ministers in court, ministers of the word who have not yet entered the kingdom of heaven use to cover their inadequacies. That's all that is. Now that I've explained what the keys of the kingdom of heaven are not, now let's look at some of the details to help you to recognize them. However, before I expose this, I want to invite you to subscribe. If you are new to this channel or you have not yet subscribed, please take a few seconds to do so now. Turn on notification. That's the first thing I want you to do. To do this, click the bell icon, then select all. That way, you won't miss any of my new Bible studies. Because whenever time I upload a new content, YouTube will notify you. Okay. Finally, please like this Bible study. Liking it ensures that 
more people see this content and the channel grows so that kingdom citizen can also grow in the knowledge of God and Christ. And I thank you for showing your love in this respect. Now let's resume with today's Bible study. Defining the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What are the main purposes of the keys of the kingdom of heaven? Now, while you're pondering this, keep in mind that the kingdom of heaven is not a natural place. It's not a physical place. It is spiritual. We don't interact with the kingdom of heaven with our senses. We utilize the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to interact with the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, don't see the keys of the kingdom as elements that grant or deny entry or access. That's not what the keys are. It's not something that you put in a lock and turn and then the door opens and you go in. That's not what the keys of the kingdom are. It's far from that. The next thing I want to tell you is that there are no keys to the kingdom of heaven. We don't need any to enter the kingdom. But there are quite a few keys of the kingdom. Last week, I did a video Bible study explaining how to enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no other route to enter it besides the one I discussed in that study. That is it. Nevertheless, many keys of the kingdom do exist. Recall what Jesus said to his disciples. Given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 13 verse 11. What are the keys of the kingdom and how they function are mysteries of the kingdom of heaven that only kingdom citizens know. So if you are not a kingdom citizen, I don't expect you to know this. And you will not know this. Because there is no way for you to. And there are many kingdom citizens who don't even know this. Because it depends on how much you are seeking the kingdom. That's a function of what you know about the kingdom. How much are you seeking the kingdom of heaven? There are many Christians are, I'm not even using, the, I don't even want to use the word Christians. There are many kingdom citizens who are in the kingdom don't even know that they are in the kingdom. Don't know what the kingdom is about. And why? Because they heard the gospel of the kingdom. They believe it. They accept it. And they entered in. But that's it. They have not sought to know the details about the kingdom of heaven. So they remain ignorant about how to live, what to do, and how the keys of the kingdom operate. So, how do the keys of the kingdom of heaven operate? Fundamentally, they perform two tasks. First, they facilitate. And second, they restrict. Those are the basic functions of the keys of the kingdom of heaven. They bind and they release. Jesus said to his disciples, I will Actually, he said to his disciples and specifically to Apostle Peter, he says, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16 verse 19. So the keys bind both on earth and in heaven. And this is important. The keys not only just bind on earth, but it binds also in heaven, but not at the same time. So first you have to bind on earth. You have to restrict. You have to contain in earth, on earth. At a later time, that what you bind on earth will also be bound or tied or restricted in heaven. If you are not a kingdom citizen, you could only bind on earth. But that action is temporary. 
because it's not approved by Evan, later it resumes. So what I'm saying is, if you are not a kingdom citizen, you can also bind stuff on earth. You can restrict them. Yes, you can. Because you are made in the image of God. You are a son of God. And God, God executes things by speaking. You can bind stuff, but it will not last. It's not permanent. Because heaven has not, will not agree with you if you are not in the kingdom. However, when kingdom citizens bind on earth, heaven sanctions and approve it in heaven. Thus, it ceases permanently. No one on earth could undo it. Hmm. That's power, you know, that's power. But it only comes through the key. Similarly, whatever kingdom citizen release on earth is also released in heaven. It will continue and no one could stop it. But the same is the opposite for non-kingdom people. So only kingdom people can do these things, both in, on earth and in heaven. So what could we bind on the earth? Any behavior or event that potentially possesses an unfavorable outcome for us, we could bind on the earth. For example, say that the hurricane season has started. The Weather Channel has announced that the area that you are residing in will experience a storm tonight. You could and you should bind that approaching storm. Wow, yes, it sounds powerfully. But that's what a kingdom citizen does. Yes, you have the keys of the kingdom. You can bind that storm. The keys <clears throat> allow kingdom citizens to exercise their dominion over the earth. And anything that move on the earth. That's what the keys do. Therefore, as kingdom citizens, we could bind any unfavorable behavior or event in the earth and heaven will approve it. And when it does, it changes the course of such event or activity. For example, the hurricane was coming towards your house. But you as a kingdom citizen, bind that hurricane and divert it with the keys of the kingdom. So you have potentially changed the course of what would have happened had you not intervened with kingdom keys. This is how we have dominion in the earth. But however, when we exercise our dominion on the earth, we don't necessarily have to use the word bind for it to be effective. I know many Christians, they are they're going about, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I bind you and I bind you Satan. It's fine. But you don't necessarily need to say that word in order to restrict activities or action or behavior in the earth. And we could learn from Jesus because Jesus demonstrates this. A restricted activities without saying the word bind. To see how he uses this key of the kingdom, read said Matthew 8 verse 23 to 27 and Mark 4 verses 36 to 41. What was Jesus expecting his, his disciples to do in these two scripture passages? Read it only from Matthew, it says, And when he was entered into a ship, he, meaning Jesus, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, in so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but it was but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. First, I want you to note how he restricted the wind without saying the word bind. Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Mark 
4 verse 39. So that's an example of how you can bind or restrict things on the earth without saying the word bind. Just speak what, what's in your heart that you desire to see. And it will happen. Second, what was Jesus expecting his disciples to do in that scenario? In Matthew and in Mark that I just talked about. He wasn't expecting them to be fearful, but to be bold and fearless. He expected them to utilize one of the keys of the kingdom of heaven to make their situation better. That was his expectation. But you might say that they were afraid for their lives. But no, they were not. Even though in Matthew 8, 25, they said, Lord, save us, we perish. Or in Mark 4, 38, they said, Master, care us not that we perish. Those statements were just a cover for their fear, faithlessness, and inadequacies. They weren't fearing for their lives. For they knew that if Jesus were with them, they were safe from all harm. It doesn't matter whether he was asleep or awake, they are still safe. And they knew this. But Jesus recognized what, the, what was happening among his disciples. I know this because of what he said, then do. So why did Jesus say that they had little or no faith? Because given this scenario, there was no need for faith if you just look at, if you look, you know, at it like that. Why did they why did he say that? What did they need faith to do? Because of what he was expecting them to do, but they didn't do. So he said they have little faith or no faith. But what did they need faith to do? Now on the one hand, they were fearful that if they speak to the wind and sea, they would not obey. As a result, they would have made themselves look foolish before all the other passengers on board that ship. On the other hand, they didn't believe that they had enough faith for the task at hand. So they didn't think that they should, they could stand up before the sea wind and it's the boisterous wind and sea and command them to be still and they would obey. They thought if they did that, they would make themselves look stupid before the people because the wind and the sea wouldn't obey. That is why Jesus said they had little faith or no faith because they didn't measure up to his expectations of them. So, Jesus recognized this of his disciples. Subsequently, he showed them how it's done. And this is, <clears throat> this is important. Jesus asked them, why are you fearful? Not of their lives, but of what people will say because they think they would fail. So, they were fearful of failure. Oh, ye have little faith. Then, he showed them what they should have done. He arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Matthew 8, 26. He did not bind the wind and the sea. Instead, he commanded it. But the men marveled, saying, What man of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Matthew 8, 27. But this is not uncommon. The Lord made us to operate like this. Genesis 2 Verse 26, 27 tells us that God gave us dominion and if over the earth and all that's in it. So if we have dominion over the earth and all that move, then aren't we supposed to speak to every situation that we encounter, speak to every problem that we have, and it obeys? Of course. And that's what Jesus was teaching his, his disciples in this situation. And they did not measure up to his expectations. Jesus expected his disciples to speak to their problems by commanding the winds and the sea to be still. But they fell flat on their faces where his expectation is concerned. So to conclude, 
Thus, the keys of the kingdom of heaven are not literal keys, but principles and laws that kingdom citizens utilize to execute dominion on the earth. They possess two main functions. They facilitate or they restrict different realms simultaneously. The seen and the unseen, thus affecting the outcome of any situation that they could encounter. Jesus was expecting his disciples to command the winds and sea to be still, but they didn't. Then he showed them how to execute this. The key of knowledge is the primary key, for it affects most of the other keys. In the absence of it, many of the other keys will not function. As kingdom citizens, we could command any situation that we encounter and it should obey us. But to get to that stage where we believe our own words, we must obey Jesus' command in this respect. You can't be speaking um, whatever you want and then when come, to, when come time to speak to your situation, you're speaking the word of God. It doesn't work that way. James says, the spring cannot send forth bitter and sweet water. The same spring cannot send forth bitter and sweet water from the same, at its, from the same source. That's what James meant. If you, want to, if you want to believe your word, you want to live in dominion in the earth, you almost all, your conversation must always be lining up with the word of God. Today you speak in this, the next minute you speak in that. No, you must be consistent. So that when you speak those words to whatever situation you encounter, you believe those words and they will come true. Finally, every person has the image of God. Consequently, such a one could function like God. This is true regardless of whether you have entered or not entered the kingdom of heaven. However, if you are not a kingdom citizen, your capabilities are limited. You could command things, but they may or may not obey. If they obey, it won't last because it's not bound in heaven. Nevertheless, I want you to practice this principle. Speak to something in your life. This week, I want you to speak to something in your life that's not working the way you want it to work. It's not working according to the Bible. A headache or a pain in some other areas of your body, speak to it. You could even speak to an action that someone else is executing to stop it or to continue or to start. Let me know in the comments below how it goes. But I want you to speak to some situation or some circumstance in your life that's very unfavorable to you this week. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessings of the Lord are on you and I'll see you in another Kingdom Bible study.